and so yeah so this tribe is famous for the use of peyote uh, yeah. through peyote they get their visions and that's how the shaman marakami they call it speak with their gods this is shamanic business it's it's good we should be positive you're right we have our health the weather's good <clears throat> business kind of sucks but I never in my life thought that tourism would be um, go down like this, but I guess now we realize that. that it's not one of the most important industries in the world. Although having fun sure should be important, I think, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. So I thought uh, maybe give the people who are listening a bit of introduction how we've met. We went into a deep ride into the jungle, a really deep, deep, deep jungle. <laughs> Took about a week to get there with all the sketchy jungle roads, uh, crazy boat rides and uh, jungle hikes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, really bonded uh, deep in there, no? Yeah, when, when you're in the middle of the Amazon and there's no one but you and a bunch of spider monkeys, <laughs> you know, you really depend on each other and you learn how to help each other out. Mm -hmm. Between Following the jaguar tracks. Bullet ants and scavenging for who's got the last chili <laughs> of chili sauce <laughs> who got some coca leaves left uh, who got some chili sauce left <laughs> or a cigarette <laughs> yeah yeah we we like we didn't run out of any supplies but yeah it was it was touch and go at the end there but the chili came close no <laughs> oh yeah yeah we we're at a chill those german guys man those guys are crazy <laughs> those guys took it all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, the coca leaf was in scarcity, yeah, and we had to save from the way back because we went to the fourteen thousand uh, altitude mountain. Yeah, on the way back, so we had to save some coca leaves, which was very hard for us because, uh, yeah, all the hikes uh, you can use a little <laughs> bit of energy. <laughs> Jungle life, man. Oh man, I miss it, man. I really want to go back. Yeah, I mean, but I can't believe this all happened and. We didn't make it, but I'm so happy we went there just before everything went crazy. Yeah, because they, they've got big problems now. Mm, Peru yeah. was shut down really hard, and Brazil's where one of those variants came out of. They've yeah. got a big problem in, in Manus. They're, they're also not shipping coca leaves. Eh? So, uh, oh, no. Everybody's dry here in the Netherlands. There was a big crisis. Everybody's sharing their last pieces, you know. Really? Wow. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I don't understand why why they not shipping stuff out. I don't know. Strict lockdown in Peru. I don't know. Well, that's crazy because, like, I was someone was complaining the other day about the border being closed. You know, between the U.S. and Mexico, and yeah. I'm like, you know, hey, buddy in Minnesota, are you eating tomatoes? He's like, yeah. Well, you know what? Fuck you. Because they came from Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> if you're eating an orange right now and you live in Minnesota, you better thank a Mexican. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, they're not yeah. growing in your area. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Peru. I, I've, I've got some rugs from Peru and uh, my buddy, his son was flying to Mexico and was actually on the plane taxiing to the runway when the president declared martial law. And the plane had to turn around and go back to the terminal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I, I never got my rugs. Well, what? Crazy, crazy. But times. I thought that Peru would be shipping stuff by now. Yeah. Maybe. Um, no, because I, I subscribe to all the alerts. As soon as the coca leaves are available again, then I get all kinds of messages. But so I, I'm sure they're not shipping yet. So, But yeah, man. Uh, I think it's also good to give a little bit of introduction what you do with peyote people. I see a very nice uh, piece of art in the background. Yeah, this is my buddy Jose, uh, Jose Benitez. Sanchez was one of the original uh, artists of the yarn paintings. So I, I came here back in like 95, uh, right out of college. And uh, always thought that there was opportunity. I, I grew up in Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. just outside of Toronto, up in the suburbs, and uh, came to Mexico kind of naive. I thought fish came breaded. Uh, didn't know that there was actually Indians that still existed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 
well, I was absolutely fascinated when I met some here in the street and got to know them and they got to know us and started trading things for their, their wares. And then I went up into the mountains and mm-hmm. that was for me, one of the most eye opening experiences. Um, I know that you're friends with uh, Arno and Vincent and I took yeah. them up there a couple of years ago and uh, it, to be able to, we charter a small Cessna and it's about an hour flight from here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but to be able to land on the Mesa and, and just, see this little village it's existed for probably a thousand years in basically the same state i mean they, they've got electricity now but the people are still in basically the same state you know they they survive on what they grow yeah 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 you completely know they make a little bit of art on the side yeah completely and uh That's fascinating. So that, that for me was was something that i was just blew my mind that this still existed I mean, we're we're three hours from LAX, you know, one of the biggest, most cosmopolitan cities in the world. And these guys are, you know, 500 years behind in, in most sense of technology, at least. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so this tribe is famous for the use of peyote uh, yeah. through peyote. They get their visions and that's how the shaman Marakami, they call it, speak with their gods. And then they have created these offerings for their gods. And from these sort of crude, primitive, rudimentary offerings, this commercial art has evolved, which has become a little bit more refined. So what you see behind me is uh, his communication with his gods, asking for the rain to fall so the corn grows and they have sustenance. Okay. And this actually works? That, that's the funny thing is, is that they absolutely believe it. I, I've been in ceremonies with grown men physically crying with tears running down their cheeks, asking out loud why it hasn't rained. Like, what, what have I done wrong? What, what do I have to do for the rain to come? And yeah, they, they truly believe that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I've always had a saying, like, when the world ends, I want to be the one who goes and tells them. <laughs> that, that's one of the big problems I, I will I'll tell you a story. We were doing a, a ceremony deep in the mountains. And uh, at daybreak, we broke camp and we had to hike out of there. And it was a very steep hill. And uh, I couldn't walk. I, I don't know what the problem I had was. And they just told me, like, listen, you've got to get to the halfway point. And the old man, who's the shaman, will do a limpia. He will cleanse your soul. And I, I've got camera gear and I've got a sleeping bag and stuff with me. And, and I'm trying to hoof it up this mountain. We get to the halfway point and the old man starts this, uh, this, this ritual with his feathers. And what he does is he uses the feathers to take the bad energy out of you uh, like a straw. And then he spits. And so he, he does this to me and he spits up this, um, this hair. He goes, look, look, this is elder brother deer tail. And he chastised you. He's put arrows in your knees so you can't walk because you filmed the ceremony. It didn't leave the proper offering. You must put one peso in the water hole. So I'm like, I'm looking around my pockets, you know, and I've got 10 pesos. I'm like, here, man, if God needs it, give this to God. You know, maybe it'll help me him or help me get out of this situation. And he starts yelling in dialect. So I go to the guy next to me. I'm like, hey, what, what's the old man saying? He says, dumb white guy, dumb white guy just put 10 paces in the water hole. God doesn't drink, but the shaman does. <laughs> it, it's not about the, the how much you give. It's just the act of giving. I, and that's one of the big differences, I think, between them and us or our Western civilization. We've been trained in a sense that we can pay our way out of anything. Mm-hmm. And, and they don't believe that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just the act of giving is, is the important part. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what more can you tell us about uh, because they also do a pilgrimage like a holy sacred pilgrimage to, to gather the peyote right the cactus yeah some of the elders that I work with they used to do it by foot so it used to be a 40 day hike 20 there and 20 back at almost a jogging pace and uh, today basically in the 1970s there was a foreigner who lived with them named Peter Collings 
And Peter at that time could see that private property, fences, highways were changing their traditional route to go and get there. And so he suggested that they fill out their offerings into commercial pieces and sell them for the money that they needed to take the bus there. Mm -hmm. So today they take trucks or buses, uh, but they still stop in all the important sanctuaries and water holes. Uh, Basically, we believe that there's certain parts where they would stop as they go along uh, to rest, to get water, supplies, things like that. So they still honor those things as they go along the route. Peyote is an interesting thing because it only grows in one specific geographical region. Uh, It's been transplanted in northern Mexico, uh, southern Texas, places like that for the North American church, as well as natives like the Yaqui and the Tarumara. But mm-hmm. the peyote itself is native to one specific area we call Wirikuta. Okay. Wirikuta, and so yeah. for them, it's like Muslims going to Mecca, yeah, Jews yeah, yeah. going to Jerusalem. It's their obligation, at least once in their life, to go from where they live in the mountains to get the peyote and bring it back for their ceremonies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We think and no one can really prove this conclusively, but we think it's two different tribes okay. because one represents deer, which is a hunter gatherer. And one represents corn, which is an agrarian based tribe. So, so we think so that it's peyote the, that brought the two together. Really? Because the deer one is called, what's the deer called again? Uh, Kayumari. Kayumari. The blue deer. The yeah. blue deer, indeed, because... Yeah. When uh, Don Heriberto and Don Filiberto when he, were here in the Netherlands, they yeah. uh, did a ceremony here, which I could participate with. I'm very grateful for. And at a certain point, they said, look, Kayumari is here. And then the, the, you could see a little bit of the, of the deer in the fire. It's really crazy, man. It's still, you're, you're high on peyote, so, but, but it's, still, it's still amazing, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, those spirits are here all the time. It, it, it's just we can't see them or focus on them. We've become so cluttered, our brains in Western civilization, that we've lost that magic, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. And they're living full time in this magic, no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, like, uh, how you say this? Western mind breaking things, you know, mind bending things that you've experienced with these guys. The same sort of thing, like you said, like you could see Kayomari. We were in a, a ceremony one time, and I see this like humanoid figure inside the fire. Mm-hmm. And, and you're always in partners. So I go to my partner, I'm like, Hey, do you see this, or is it just me? And this guy starts laughing. I mean, he's rolling on the ground, laughing at me. I'm like, What's so funny? He's like, Who do you think the shaman's been talking to all night? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah man um, one of the best experiences i think we've ever had though was with uh was with my son when my son was probably he was probably five four or five at the time and uh we brought the shaman over who slept over in our house and in the morning um my son had problems with, sort of with asthma and Mm -hmm. uh so the shaman in the morning you know said okay open the window put the couch here bring him out and he needed school supplies i'm like school supplies i'm like okay whatever so he does this whole thing and he he does the same thing with his feathers where he sucks out the bad energy and he spits and in his hand manifests a quartz rock and so he takes the rock a quartz yeah yeah a little rock yeah yeah, and he looks at it and he laughs and he throws it out the window. And we're like, OK, what's what's going on? He's like, oh. You know, what, what's wrong with his his asthma? Is he going to be cured or, or do his, is he going to have problems? And he says, no, his asthma, he'll grow out of that. Kids got problems in school. I'm like, school. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> well, I never told the guy we signed my son up into a, pri- a public school. And he couldn't handle the pace there. I mean, it, those are pretty street wise kids there. Mm-hmm. And my son, you know, didn't grow up having to fight for the last pizza pizza. 
Mm -hmm. uh, like these kids did. So he got bullied tremendously. What we never told the shaman was literally the week before he came over, we had switched schools from a public school to a private school. So I have no idea how he knew that, but he says, that's the problem. And that's what I'm here to fix was his uh, problems. He's got in school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that was actually a very eye opening experience, at least for my wife. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's super crazy because also from your tribe, the, the Wicholas, the Marikami, he did the same with me with the feathers. So he sucked yeah. something out of me and then he threw up a black stone, uh -huh. a black round stone in his hand. And I was like, what? So did you secretly put it in your mouth or, <laughs> or <laughs> how does this trick work? But, but he said, yeah, this is somebody in your family is holding a grudge against you. Uh -huh. uh, and I just put it out of there because you're carrying this grudge with you. And, you know, I can definitely relate to these things, but it's very strange. It's, it's hard for us to wrap our heads around it. Yeah. But yeah, no, there's people who have the energy to see things that we can't. For us Westerners, it's very hard to uh, wrap our minds around. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So you are uh, you started your business. Uh, peyote people so how are you helping them you are selling their products to uh, make them some money so they can catch the bus to their pilgrimage uh, thing we have a small room downstairs with no lights or no windows we just lock them in there until they finish something it's easier <laughs> yeah right. no we we buy them a lot of the supplies Mm -hmm. Like it's unfortunate, but because of economics, a lot of them don't have the money to buy all the colors or better quality beads. Mm -hmm. So we help them in the sense that they don't have to invest any money. I'll buy them the carving, the beads. They just do the work and mm -hmm. they get paid for that. Yeah. We also prefer working with the guys that actually live in the mountains. It gives them access to a market. Uh, the people in the, uh, Where is it? People in the city have easy access to market, but the ones up in the mountains, they could make the two day trek to the city. But if the guys have already sold all the stores there, you know, they have nowhere to sell their wares. So mm -hmm. we prefer working with the guys in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just gives them access. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit more about the story behind the art? The, the art is, is all influenced based on their own visions of what they see mm -hmm, on the peyote, mm -hmm. but every artist has their own, um, their own style. Mm -hmm, and and mm -hmm. I think for us, that's what defines the art from the crafts is if you can recognize one artist from another. Mm -hmm. Today, there's a lot of beaded artists out there. Uh, there's a lot of pieces, but it's really hard to distinguish one from another. Mm -hmm. And so part mm -hmm. of our job is to educate people about why certain people are worth more, not only because of their aesthetics, but also because of their commitment to their culture. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that they've had positions in the community, things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's happening, though, in Mexico, or probably around the world, for that matter, is things are changing. They have access to the Internet now. And so they're yeah. seeing things that they wouldn't see otherwise. So they're using new figures that they wouldn't know, um, beating things like elephants or, or other kinds of animals that they wouldn't have before. There are no elephants And in Mexico. There's mammoths. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of fossils that they found of mammoths, but of elephants, no. Mm -hmm. Not per se. Yeah. Although I, one, one artist, he brought me a piece couple of years ago he puts this thing on the table he goes hey look at this isn't this great i'm like what the hell is this you know it's kind of gray and black stripes he's like look man i saw it on a tv it's a black and white horse <laughs> it's a like, a black and white horse the guy saw a zebra yeah <laughs> you know, it's like his first time he's ever seen a zebra he's like oh my god this thing is amazing it's a black and white horse I'm like yeah it's kind of cool And so, yeah, things are changing. Um, in Mexico City, there was a big competition this year for art. But instead of putting in like a really fine beaded commercial like piece, I actually exhibited an, an offering that I mm -hmm. thought was more significant. 
because today they seem to be doing these huge sculptures of like Jeff Kuhn balloon dogs beaded from head to toe. Um, there's one artist who actually beaded a car. They beaded Formula One cars. They beaded a Volkswagen bug. And, and someone called me out on this because I actually have um, kid robot dunnies in the gallery. And she's like, well, you have these. They're just the same as beating a, a balloon dog. I'm like, yeah, but at least the the small dunnies or kid robot things you can take back up in the mountains and do in your own home. You know, I, I don't have to bring the artist here to make them work here and live in the city, you know, where they're probably going to lose some of their culture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they, they, at least in the, the distinction that we like to give is that our artists live in the mountains and still participate in the ceremonies and rituals. They just mm -hmm. come here, drop the art, and then go back home. Yeah, 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 yeah. But today, they, the trend seems to be that they'll beat your mother-in-law as long as she stands still long enough. And also the, the big Kayumari, the deer, the antler, the fins and mock art. Is that also uh, fixed through you? You was the connection? Yeah. 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 So we're, yeah. Vincent just sent us some antlers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got four sets of Dutch red deers that we're, be we're beating. And uh, we did the Megalosaurus maybe three years ago now, 2017, I think. So f almost four years now that uh, that's when we did the, uh, that project with him. Yeah, that's cool, man. Which I, I think is different than like the big balloon dogs that they're doing. Actual objects. It's something that was alive. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's an actual deer. So it also goes hand in hand with the culture itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very dope, man. Go on. Yeah, it, just to, to work with Vincent and his vision of trying to save the world and nature and everything. Um, it, it, for the Caillou Mario project for, with Vincent Mock has a uh, really important in saving Wiracuta because Wiracuta, where the peyote grows, has been threatened by a Canadian mining company. Yeah, the silver mining and we're, companies. Huh? Yeah, First Majestic. It's a Canadian mining company that we're trying to keep out of expropriating all the property there because the their open pit mines will just destroy the water table. And it's a desert biosphere, so it's very delicate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the native place where the peyote grows, right? Yeah, it's the only one where it's actually from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anything else you want to share uh, about uh, the peyote culture or the, the huicholas, the marikame, before we go on a bit more about your business? Uh, no, man. I just hope people are aware that there are small tribes left in Mexico that are struggling to maintain their traditions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's probably hard for people in Europe to get their mind around the idea that there are people still living the traditional way. Uh, yeah. They're basically subsistence farmers. They make a little bit of art in between farming mm -hmm. uh, that they sell for the supplies that they need to do their ceremonies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But it's something that, that really needs to be told their story at least that that they still exist in today's world yeah and the art they're making is incredibly beautiful i by the way all right i got it it's a jaguar oh, head your jaguar head yeah man so this is the type of art that the wicholas are making the marikamis and yeah. which are you you are selling on your web shop peyote people Yes. And it's all very small beads. It's incredible yeah. work. Here, I'll show you one of mine. Yeah, it's it's very intricate work. Um, there's actually different colors we like to use. That one's kind of what we call commercial because they're primary colors. Mm -hmm. Where are we here? There. Oh, wow. I don't know how to. Super crazy. And this is this is my favorite. Step on the dog here. My hats. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're that's one of the this, best ones. They're wearing these crazy hats with all the feathers around it. It's fascinating, man. Yeah, that one with the uh, scarlet macaw. It took it. It uh, it wasn't that. Uh, easy to get 
they're kind of protective nowadays of a lot of their stuff. Mm -hmm. Here, and, and just in case, uh, you were saying that this weekend it's supposed to get down to minus 20 yeah. in, in Holland. Well, here, oh, just man. in case you want a little bit of... <laughs> <laughs> You're rubbing it in there. So when you're right? looking out your window. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got our sweaters on at 10 degrees. Don't worry. <laughs> That's the Mexican five note. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, these yeah, are so they do yarn art and bead art. Yeah, no, that's cool. But it, like there's uh, I got a piece this week from this one guy. I don't know if you can see it because I've only got it on my phone, but he's like a surrealist. Oh, it's just absolutely. I don't even know which way it goes. Like if you up, down, sideways, it's just completely out there. Yeah, man. It's like a paint. Oh, I've seen this, saw this on Instagram. You, you cannot see it right very yeah. well, but now, but. I saw it on Instagram. But yeah, it's yeah, I popped it on Instagram. Man. Yeah, the, and he, we had a lot of hope for these guys because he was going in a different direction, but economics pulled him back down into doing just little junky things. But it's incredible when you give these guys the space, you know, to go deep, deep inside, they can pull out some stuff that'll just blow your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, incredible, man. So... This kind of art, if people go to your website, peyotepeople.com, and they buy their art, they support the traditional communities, right? Yeah. We give them the carvings, the beads. Um, so half the proceeds go back to them up in the mountains. And uh, that's how they get the supplies that they need for their ceremonies and rituals. And so, yeah, it really helps everyone out, not just us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so what I'm doing here with the Shamanic Business Channel, I'm basically doing shamanic sessions without the drugs, without the POT, trying to induce the shamanic visions uh, in a sober state of mind. So this is what we're going to do. And therefore, it's best if you have a question so that the shamanic visions can give you an answer in the form of these visions. So if you thought about a question, something that's bothering you or a challenge that you're facing right now? Uh, yeah, it's, it's probably just business. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I, we have three stores here in Puerto Vallarta mm -hmm. and I don't know if it makes sense anymore to keep that many retail locations. Yeah. Given that today everything is now moving online and just the fact that we don't have tourism, yeah. I'm not really sure where we are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So my question for the world would be, you know, should I, keep the stores or just go online yeah it's a good question to ask so uh yeah are you ready okay so i just put the blindfold on and go in the hole yeah this is shamanic business welcome back man Ooh. Ah. Ooh. that was very relaxing yeah yeah i think we should all do that just to relax from our <laughs> crazy schedules you feel relaxed now but yeah a little meditation is good for everyone it's always good to um, start talking right away because it can mm -hmm. fade just as quick as a dream can fade you know yes ah turtles hmm? turtles okay turtles are cool <laughs> well i like the they they kind of stay in the ocean most of the time but just come on to land to lay their eggs mm -hmm. but under the ocean you know they can get away from all the the rough that's on the surface mm -hmm. okay so you yeah. saw you saw turtles yeah. So we start at the beginning. So what was the first step? Uh, well, it, it was rough on the top surface of the water, so it went down under. Uh huh. Under the water, it was nice and peaceful. And, and then it had to come up onto the surface to breathe. 
but then it went up on the land and laid her eggs and then went back down into the ocean. Mm -hmm. And it was just, just nice swimming around, just very peaceful. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the surface, it was all rough and there was wind and boats and traffic and, but underneath it was nice and calm. Mm -hmm. And just swimming, frolicking in the ocean. Nice and relaxed. Uh, yeah, we just kept going around and around, trying to get away from all the chaos on top and the surface. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but it would always go back to the land eventually to lay the eggs and then back in the ocean. Okay. And it was one turtle or multiple ones? Just one. Just one. Okay. Yeah. So what kind of solitary? A solitary turtle. Yeah. So what, what could this turtle symbolize? Maybe the business? Either the business or more my own self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe the offline sales at this moment feels like a rough terrain with no tourism and the corona, everything crazy with all kinds of rules and everything. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're totally dependent on tourists arriving. And if they don't, you know, there's no one really for us to talk to. We don't mm -hmm. do that well with national clients. It's really the Americans we need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So above the water could symbolize the, the rough terrain you are now entering with your business with the tourism sales, no? Yes. And then, I don't know, I'm just a suggestion. Maybe under the water is the online world where everything is smooth sailing i don't know yes it could be it's just or just not worrying mm -hmm. i tend to worry a lot okay yeah yeah so yeah. To just deal with it you can't change it so just kind of work with it and let it flow yeah 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 yeah. that makes sense like if you're above the surface all the time looking at all the trouble in the world and with the tourism then you get stressed out but you need to only lay your eggs during work time right whether yeah. it's online or offline sales and when you're not working it's best to be relaxed swimming in the ocean i don't know yeah yeah i like that i, I like that analogy a lot you've got to work you've, you've always got to go back to your base you know to lay your eggs and do your thing once you've planted the seed you can't worry about it growing you can just watch it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. grow So it's best maybe just to relax and not worry too much about everything going on at the surface that you can't control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily answer your question, does it? No, but it gives you peace. It gives you peace. Yeah. Yeah. That's even better. I, I think that's, yeah, that's just as important. The, I guess the answer to my, the, my question will be answered by numbers. Mm-hmm. The 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 own the, the sales numbers they themselves will answer the question. It's it's more of being able to live with that decision, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I won't make it. the The numbers economically are, are what will make that decision. We just have to be at peace with that decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very interesting how these shamanic dreaming sessions work. Eh? Because sometimes you ask a question. And it gives you an answer that is slightly different from what you hoped for, but is more beneficial for you in the long term. Like your subconscious knows even better for you what you need than you consciously know, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Your subconscious knows a lot more about you than you think it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what's your feeling a little bit stressed out? or? Uh... Oh, yeah, totally. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, we're stressing because... It was okay. I mean, business was coming along. It was getting better and better and better. And then just like two weeks ago, it just stopped. It just completely got cut off. And everyone, everyone here is going, well, why? Because now they've got the vaccination. We depend on winter. Mm -hmm. So everyone comes here because it's cold and snowy up north. That's when they come to Mexico. So this is the coldest, snowiest month. And there's nobody here. So we, we just can't figure it out. Why all of a sudden people just stop coming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it, it's had, I think, everyone a little bit stressed out the last couple of weeks. Because our, our business 
is dependent on really November till like April. Mm -hmm. That's our window of tourism. And after that, there's not much going on. And so if we don't have the people now, it's not like April, May, June, there's going to be people here. There, there just isn't ever. No, because it's too hot. Eh? Yeah, and it's too hot. And it's too much humidity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you do feel now more relaxed after the session, after you was yes. a little bit stressed out. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. That that drumming is, is I think, very nice. I think everyone should learn how to take 10 minutes out and just meditate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we forget that often in the hectic uh, Western world. No? I, I remember a couple years ago, I don't know what happened. Like I had locked myself out of the house and I had to go down and meet my wife for the keys. And, uh, and I was playing on the phone and the taxi driver said, Hey, stop. I'm like, what? He's like, look, the sun's setting. And, and we, we forget it here because we live here. But mm -hmm. I mean, I guess a lot of people come here to watch the sunset over the ocean. And it, it's something people should do all the time is, is stop and, you know, smell the flowers, watch the birds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was incredible throughout this whole quarantine to watch the parrots, you know, in the tree next to our house, eating the seeds and nature sort of came back alive where it had been hidden for a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I think it's important. Like you said, it's important to ask your questions, but then when the answer comes, it might not directly answer your question but it still puts you at peace yeah yeah it changes your perspective somehow yes you look at things differently mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's good to stay under the water for a bit just lay your eggs don't come to the surface a bit because there's all drama and panic and you know yeah just kind of surface to breeze and then go back down and and get away from all those troubles mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah because if you focus too much on the news and on the on the digits you know the numbers that it also stresses you out now yes enormously mm -hmm. yeah so i also got in trance of course and i asked the same question and what i usually do is i enter crystal cave and go towards the underground river where this seahorse appears then hop on the back of the seahorse and this time he took me to an island I've been before. It is the island of the digital wolf. And actually, I made a video about this for the guys on YouTube. This is going to be the link to the digital wolf video. And I met him a second time in this podcast. Uh, but basically, the digital wolf, he's sitting on top of a digital mountain. And he's howling to the moon. And his howling is like making content, like videos, like providing value uh, without price, eh? just for free. And by doing this, the digital vibes that are coming out of his mouth uh, merge in together with the moon and the moon shines a little bit brighter and it shines on the jungle. Uh, so the, the, the animals from the jungle, they are being pulled towards the mountain. And you know, if you maybe it's an idea to start making more videos about the culture of the peyote so people get more interested in their culture. And then, of course, also they want to buy more of their products because they support the culture. But the interesting thing was, is that when I was on the on the on the top of the hill with the digital wolf, we looked at another hill and it was a normal hill with a normal wolf with a really small jungle next to it. Maybe symbolizing that, you know, with online sales, you have a really big jungle to shine on. And with normal sales, like tourism, you know, retail, it's actually a very small target audience you can uh, sell your products to. Yeah, but online is kind of limitless. It's got a lot more that you can do, mm -hmm, I guess, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I like that idea, though. I, I think that we do need more content. We need to make more videos and, and things like that to show people who it is we work with and why. Yeah, yeah. It, so, it's funny you say the seahorse, because that's sort of the symbol of Puerto Vallarta. Oh, really? There's a little boy on top of a seahorse, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, because this, 
this state of Mexico is where tequila and mariachi come from. And uh-huh. they go hand in hand because the more tequila you drink, the more mariachi you want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man, that was uh, the thing that I saw. Maybe it helps. Yeah, no, I like that. It's actually something we've been discussing the last couple of weeks. We've, we've got someone helping us uh, do some of our links between our um, Facebook commerce and our website. So we're trying to link the two together to make it a, a smoother transition from one to the other. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, I do realize that we're, we're missing something in content in terms, especially of like videos of who the people are and what they do, sort of what their daily lives are, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, if you look at the digital wolf, the more he's howling to the moon, the brighter the moon's going to shine and the more animals from the jungle can find their way to your mountain, you know? So, uh, yeah, yeah no, that's I'm, awesome. And I guess, uh, yeah. And online is kind of like the turtle also. You're just floating in the water, waiting for the sails to come in nice and calm instead of like in the store, which is on the surface, fighting with tourists and everything every day. Okay, yeah. I like that. Yeah, 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 that's good. And how are you doing? I know this is a new venture for you. How are you feeling as you're kind of blindly going through and creating all of this content yourself? Uh, excited, man. I love doing it. It's uh, not bringing me uh, a lot of money at the moment. <laughs> But, you know, I have fun doing it and uh, it's really my passion. I feel this is just the way to go for me. And, you know, putting in the time, making the investment. Uh, I think one way or the other, it will work out or maybe create some business for me. Uh, but mostly I just love doing it. So I don't I feel like... It's- yeah, if it's something that you like doing, if it's like your passion, I, I think that you're onto something here that that it, it will eventually work for you. Any business is going to take time. Yeah. Uh, it's going to take time just to establish yourself. And then you get that snowball effect where it's just mm-hmm. going to start rolling and rolling and rolling. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, it just gets easier from there, I think. But the obviously, yeah, the first year or two is going to be really tough until you establish a base. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, no, good for you, man. It's, it's a huge leap of faith, yeah. you know, to leave like an established nine to five job and do something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I know one of the most difficult things for me, at least, was was not having to go to the store. You know, if I don't have that stability, I don't get a lot done on my own in my house. You know, and so I have to go to the store and, and do the work there. Otherwise, I just sit here and watch whales jump in the ocean and stuff yeah <laughs> yeah it's an online thing eh? you really have to have discipline to uh make something out of nothing because there's yeah. still nothing you know i have to create my way into yeah. this new shamanic business paradigm i don't know but you know if you it doesn't feel like working because because it's my passion so i'm just hanging out with you it feels like i'm i'm hanging out with you and i'm i'm having fun and i can Good. provide value along the way so that's uh, even a bonus man yeah and i mean especially now with people um i know something my sister is very concerned about in canada is people's own mental health yeah. you know if you can't go outside if you can't exercise your physical health obviously because of the virus is important but your mental health is something that people are forgetting about and that's just as important to be able to to take a trip within your own head yeah yeah you know and do things like that yeah if you can travel outside we can travel inside and that's what i'm offering basically you know yeah and 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 answer those questions that everyone has about hey what am i doing this the right way or or what what else can i be doing to better myself yeah 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 and i do believe that you know of course in shamanism you have you like communicating with spirits so you could you know philosophize like this turtle was it really a spirit or something but i like to keep it more rational and psychoanalytical that our subconscious knows things better than our conscious mind does and when this when we ask this question we ask to our subconscious and that the subconscious is writing the script of the dream and that there's a message back from our subconscious to our conscious mind 
inside of this vision, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, totally. Now the, the subconscious will guide us. We just have to be able to tap into it. Yeah. And yeah. I think there's a lot of people that have blockers up that, that won't allow it to get in. We've got to let those walls down, you know, so we don't worry too much about everything else going on and, and can just focus on what we need to do to better ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like this. I, I think that more people need to, like you said, more people need to know about it. They need to know about how important it is to meditate, to relax, to, to allow your subconscious to answer your questions for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I definitely will be recommending your services to everyone I know. <laughs> perfect, man. Perfect. Cool. Listen, I got to go. I hope you have a fantastic evening. Yeah, I will. Uh, I hope you have I a gotta, fantastic work day, man. <laughs> <laughs> got to get my day started. And uh, yeah, man, definitely. We'll stay in touch and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, cool. I'll have my evening bear while you have your morning coffee there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Bye.